Good afternoon, morning, evening, or night, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alex, and this episode's subject comes in from Dave Tinted Blue. What makes a good horror game, in your opinion? Here's the thing: I, I, I do not like the horror game genre at all. I find it to be repetitive, and most of all, not fun. Because in essence, the the entire idea of horror games, at least modern ones, are that they're kind of broken and designed around not being fun. Because to be scared, you need to be powerless. You need to be able to be, you know, immediately killed by things and jump scared and this and that. In saying that, taking all my personal opinions out of it, what makes a good horror game? I think part of it is you need to be powerless. You can't have some way of fighting back because then you get a Dead Space situation. I love Dead- all the Dead Space games, but they're not really horror games to me. They're more like aliens, you know? You have a way to fight back, you become a badass, you got, you got all your power armor and whatnot, you got all your guns and upgrades and, and all this business. It means that when I think about Dead Space, I think about the different guns, the different upgrades, how strong I am, the set pieces, like with the big exploding train thing and whatnot. I don't think about all the scariness. Because, to be fair, the first one is a, is, is a full-on survival horror game, but you still do have the power there. It was a nice balance, and they did start to go way more towards the action route in the, in the previous ones. But, in general, I've played some of Amnesia, thought it was just... It, it, was, it was too far on the other end of the spectrum. Nothing was happening, and when you got to the scares, they weren't worth it. Like, it took an hour to get to, like, the first creature to appear, and it, it, there, there was no gameplay or any sort of sandboxy thing or systems put in place to make it satisfying or engaging to me in any way so it just it was it was quite a drag to me so when i got to the scares it was like it, is that it really is that all you're going to do here then move on to something like slender slender is is fine it's it's very effective for what it is a free little download and i think as a, as a horror game goes that is pretty much perfect it needs to be i, I don't like it when they they just spread themselves too thin. Like all this, like, Slender the Arrival and whatnot, they, they, they're just frustrating after a while because it is the same thing. They have their little thing, their little system built up around the hiding from a thing or running and trying to get pages or whatever, and it's fine for 10-15 minutes, you get your scare, you go away, you close the thing, whatever. But when it's, it's, they try to split it up into different sections and try and put a story and stuff in there, I don't think it works very well because, because they're designed around not being fun. They're designed around fucking with you and trying to make you scared and when when you're playing slender and you get however many of the pages and you only need one more then you die getting them all again starting from scratch is not a fun experience you've already done it and then the scares start to go down because you're just like Ugh, i have to go and do this again really i have to try and run through this hallway and not be killed by the thing and uh, it becomes this whole rigmarole of like well it's not scary anymore to me same with five nights at freddy's the, the game is genuinely creepy and atmospheric but there's nothing to the game i don't i wouldn't call it a good horror game because it's fine it's 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 really engaging and and interesting and you're you're glued to it for the first time you play it once you've never seen anything before you press start you're playing it you're sat there you're going through it it's tense then you die or you fail oh i have to start again oh i'm i'm waiting here for three minutes for something to happen oh look, he's running through the corridor okay i've seen that before just close the door blah 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 and it becomes more of it becomes more of a an exercise in repeating a certain system like with Five Nights at Freddy's. If you go and watch Markiplier's, like, he did the the highest difficulty thing where it's like, you have to, all the AI are on crazy hard difficulty and they'll fling at you over and over. And he gets into this thing where he's just pressing the buttons, like, click, 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 just spamming the click button, not thinking about the atmosphere anymore. He's not thinking about the scares. He's not thinking about anything like that. It, it becomes more about how can we exploit this system to finish it instead of, this is creepy. It's the same with something like Outlast. Outlast is, it's it's kind of like Amnesia, but there's a lot more going on in it. It's more story-focused. There's more of a cinematic thing going on there, but it's the same thing again. You have no power, and it's a lot of running away from people and exploring through these places, you're being chased by things, you're falling down into dark areas, you've got your flashlight that runs out of battery. All that's all cool and whatever. But again, like with Five Nights at Freddy's, once you learn the AI pattern, once you learn how to sort of run around the creatures that chase you, it defeats the purpose again. It doesn't, it makes, once you defeat the game, then it doesn't become scary anymore. And there's yet to be a horror game that really does. I mean, this is as far as I've seen in my limited, admittedly, knowledge of the horror genre, and there's a reason I don't like it. 
if the if good games were coming out of it, if these immersive experiences, which I do think are worth it, were being released, then I would be playing them, and I'd have nothing against the horror genre. But it's the same with movies. Like, there's ju- there were just no good horror things in general anymore. The last good movie was The Babadook, and that was the last one in like 10 years, and even then, that's not a perfect movie, that's got its problems. The fact of the matter is, I think I, me personally, I'm a little bit more picky when it comes to horror. It needs to really be effective. I'm not going to be... It's not enough for me to say, like with Five Nights at Freddy's, Oh, the the lore and backstory is really interesting. That's not enough. The game needs to be good. The game needs to be fun to play. Wait, you know, not fun. Fun might be the wrong word there, because it needs to be at least engaging. When it becomes like a, a repetitive mess, like Five Nights at Freddy's gradually becomes once you play it enough, then to me, I'm just like, okay, I'm done, whatever, w- what's the next thing? Oh, there's Ori in the Blind Forest over there, a, gun- a game that's actually got design to it, a good story, lots of different elements going on, and it's fun. Yeah, I'll go play that. that- that's why I don't care about the horror genre, because I-, I play video games to have fun. Being scared is a unique thing that people are always searching for, and for that reason, I think people are a little more forgiving with horror games and just in general. But I think s- someone really needs to... Some company really needs to invest in in some way, some new series or something, just to reinvigorate the horror genre. It's fucking bland. It's all the same fucking shit. If anything's going to do it, it's going to be something like the Oculus. I I was imagining it. Putting on that helmet, you're sort of trapped in a world, and it could be that could be very effective if someone manages to do that right. So, what do you think about the horror genre? Can you name any games that maybe I've somehow missed that are really important? You think to the genre and make it. And don't do any of these things I'm on about, about being repetitive, about the scares wearing off really quickly. Tell me in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. And make sure you leave a suggestion for future job labs. I'll see you next time. Bye. I find that 90% of the huge channels that get a million plus subscribers are fucking garbage. Like every single day I, I open my YouTube channel. Oh, what's on the what to watch page that by default it takes you to? Oh look, there's PewDiePie. Oh look, there's Sky Does Minecraft. Hey look, there's all these things that I don't care about. Why are you telling me that? Why are you showing me this? Like random, like, oh yeah, I want to watch Taylor Swift videos. I want to watch Ed Sheeran videos. I press the not interested.